So hi, this is Ginny again and Jelly Belly over there on the tower. And uh, we're in the middle of reading The Wild Women of Lake Anna. So we're up to chapter seven. New Worries. Bailey, wearing her warm blue flannel pajamas and fuzzy yellow slippers, padded into the kitchen. She trailed a stick with a long string and wadded piece of newspaper tied to the end. We know what that's for. The kittens ran right behind, slipping and sliding on the linoleum as they tried to catch the paper bird. She flicked the paper in the air and both kittens stretched their paws and jumped as high as they could. The kittens were lots of fun. Shadow and Sally curled up with her each night, one on her neck and the other by her left ear. Bailey's fingers would find their soft bellies and they stretched and rolled. She stroked them in the morning until it was time to get up. They liked to be rubbed on the head and nuzzled her if she stopped even for a second. Her grandmother was having her second cup of coffee as she studied a map spread out on the pine table. The kitchen smelled like burnt toast. Sugar often got busy reading or doing crossword puzzles and forgot that she was cooking. What are you looking at, Sugar? asked Bailey as she poured round oats into a bowl. She felt less afraid to ask questions now than she had been during the first few days at her grandmother's house. A map of Louisa County, said Sugar. We have an idea where the pollution is coming from, the general idea at least. Harry and I are planning to walk around some land over here, she said, pointing to a thin blue line, a stream that emptied into Contrary Creek. See this darker line? It comes out down our street. It's an old road used first by the gold miners and now by the loggers and hunters. Are you allowed to go there? asked Bailey. I know the owner. But because I'm not sure if he's the one involved, I guess we'll have to do some trespassing, said Sugar, to check it out. Then, if we find the evidence, we'll call the authorities. That sounds dangerous, said Bailey, worried. Sugar was all she had left at the moment. If something happened to her, then what? Where would she live? Her heart felt like it was in her throat. Don't you worry. Harry's wife, Alice, will come stay with you while we go tramping around some evening. We have it all planned, and we have our signals. Alice knows what to do if there's any trouble, said Sugar. Bailey wanted to ask what kind of trouble, but Sugar was busy writing something on a yellow legal pad. When she was done, she folded the paper and put it in her pocket. Bailey suddenly didn't like living in a family of wild women. She wished her mother and grandmother were like other people's. She wished, it, wished that they didn't like adventures quite so much. Then her mother would stay home and her grandmother wouldn't get into trouble. And we have something to do today, continued Sugar. We need to go to Fredericksburg to shop for school things. Now that you've gotten settled in, I need to enroll you in your classes. Your break is over. Bailey's stomach churned. Going to school probably meant seeing Justin Rudd every day, maybe even riding on the bus with him. Can't I just stay home with you? She asked. You could get homework for me and I'd just do it. No longer hungry, Bailey stirred the banana slices around and around in her cereal. Sugar said firmly, the more you learn in school, the better your adventures will be. Remember your great great aunt and your great grandmother became teachers. May wouldn't have been as good a spy if she hadn't learned to speak several languages. All of us wild women read lots of books. That reminds me, we need to get you a library card. Bailey did love to read. In fact, reading had been her best subject back home at Liberty Elementary School. She much preferred curling up with a book to watching television shows, even the ones her friends liked. Since she had been at Sugar's house, she had almost finished the book on Thomas Edison, 
that she had brought with her. And, as she had explored her grandmother's house, Bailey discovered Sugar had a large collection of books, including some from her childhood. There was an entire set of the Oz books and six from the Little Maid series about girls growing up in different parts of the countries long ago. There were Dr. Doolittle and Freddy the Pig books, Heidi, and at least 10 Nancy Drew mysteries, plus A Wrinkle in Time, The Complete Set of the Boxcar Children, Where the Red Fern Grows, and The Secret Garden. Sugar had told Bailey that she could read any book she liked, but just to put it back when she was done. I didn't know there were a bunch of Oz books besides the one about the wizard, said Bailey. I think I'll read them first. I'll be ready in about half an hour, said Sugar. Fredericksburg has some big malls and the kind of stores you like. In chapter eight, we'll do one more for this sitting. Um, is called, chapter eight is called Sugar Makes a Deal. Bailey's, <clears throat> excuse me, Bailey's new school clothes. Three pairs of jeans, a green plaid long sleeve shirt, three turtlenecks, a warm gray jacket with pink trim, brown leather shoes, and her new notebooks and pencils were laid out on a table in her bedroom. Shadow and Sally had already found the pile very comfortable for napping. They were curled up in the center of it. Bailey had to admit that her room was starting to look less like a guest room and more like her own. In an Oreo cookie tin on her dresser were pieces of a blue egg which had fallen from a nest and two red feathers from Sugar's yard. Next to it, she had set up the pictures of her mother and Barker. On her bedside table with a lamp were three paperbacks that Sugar let her select at a bookstore in Fredericksburg and, best of all, on her bed was a new patchwork quilt. It wasn't exactly a new quilt. When Bailey and Sugar were on one of their treasure hunts, they stopped at a yard sale near Culpepper. Sugar decided the quilt, with lots of red, white, and blue squares, some striped and some with patterns, would brighten up Bailey's room. To her own surprise, Bailey agreed. The two of them examined the tiny stitches that the quilter had used to make it. And they, they have a picture here too. It's an heirloom piece, whispered Sugar. If you like it, let me see what they'll take for it. Just don't look like you want it. We need to act like we really don't care if they accept our offer, she said. Bailey nodded and walked over to the next table, filled with candles, jelly glasses, plastic dishes, picture frames, and baby clothes. She pretended not to be interested as Sugar offered the couple $25 for the quilt, which had a $50 price tag on it. A man with a mustache and baseball cap with the words gone fishing on it said, you've got to be kidding, that quilt's handmade. He sounded insulted. Instead of answering, Sugar walked over to the baby clothes and held up a little pink sleeper. The man consulted with his wife, a short woman with thick red hair. Okay, $40, he said after a minute. Bailey was sure Sugar would say yes. Too much, said Sugar, not even looking at the quilt. I'll give you $30 and that's my final offer. I saw a corner that needs repair. Bailey's heart sank. The quilt would have looked so pretty in her room. She saw the couple conferring again. The sign down the road said the sale ended at three o'clock and it was now 2.45. As she and Sugar had driven up the driveway, it looked like the couple was packing up large boxes with items from the tables. Perhaps they hadn't expected more customers and wanted to close early. But Bailey figured they weren't going to lower the price. To her surprise, the woman said, well, all right, you've got yourself a deal. 
Sugar and Bailey smiled at each other as they hurried away and heard the woman mutter to her husband, Got more than we thought for that old thing. After Sugar started the truck, she said, That's how it's done, Bailey. Never pay full price when you can bargain. The sellers expect it. It makes it more of an adventure. And this is a handsome spread. After we wash it, the quilt will look lovely on your bed. Bailey started out being embarrassed by her grandmother's dickering, but then was proud of her when Sugar obtained the quilt at a lower price, especially when she said it was a beauty and heirloom. You just never know what you'll find on these treasure hunts, Sugar said. The quilt, freshly washed and dried outside on the clothesline, was perfect on the bed. Bailey especially liked the big white star in the center. It was time to decide which of her new clothes to wear first. Bailey was not looking forward to starting school. She wondered what her teachers would be like and if any of the kids would be friendly. Or would they all be like Justin Rudd, making fun of her and her name? Would it be hard to find her way around the building? Would they have lockers and a band? Bailey, you're such a worrier, her mother used to say. But worrying was something that you couldn't help if you were a worrier. Bailey sat on the floor petting Sally and Shadow as they slept on her new blue sweater. She knew that Sugar was trying very hard to make her feel at home, but it wasn't the same as being in her own room in Florida and going to Liberty with her friends. She wondered if Amber missed her as much as she missed Amber. Amber, with the freckles and blue eyes, who had the best secrets of anybody. Amber, who loved to dance and do tumbling. Amber, who liked to sleep over and watch Finding Nemo three times on a rainy day. Amber, who liked to make peanut butter and marshmallow peep sandwiches, just to hear Bailey say, Rose. Okay.